So I made a cinematic portrait video a few months back with my Sony ZV-10 in S-Log3 and a lot of you guys were interested in knowing how I did the color grading of that video. In this video, I'll show you exactly that. So here I am inside the Vinci Resolve 19 and here I have a few clips from the shoot. These are the raw footage. You can see all the color grades are bypassed at this moment. All these footage are shot in 4K in 23.976 frames per second and in S-Log3 is Gamut 3 picture profile. So in this video, I'll show you two different grades that I did. One is the actual custom Kodak 2383 look that I did on the original cinematic video. In a real world scenario, I wouldn't push the 8-bit 420 Sony ZV-10 footage to that extreme. But I wanted to experiment, so I kept it. On these two clips, I'll show you the simpler grid and on these clips, you can see there is an adjustment clip. So I did the color correction on the clip level and I did the overall grid on an adjustment layer. So that is my general workflow. I have shown this in previous videos as well. So now let's go to the color tab. So you can see these two clips have a much more simpler note tree, a much more simpler color grading. And these are the clips where I did the custom Kodak 2383 look. The actual look is on this adjustment clip. This is the grading that I did. So now if I turn on the color grading, then you can see this is the custom Kodak 2383 grid. This was the raw version and this is the grid. Here is another clip. So this was the raw and this is the graded version. And if I turn on the grading for these clips, so this is much more simpler and natural looking but vibrant color grading. If you want, you can go for a slightly more cinematic vibe as well. I'll show that in another video. So let me now turn off all the nodes and break down step by step what I did. So here you can see a CST node. CST means color space transform. And here you can see I've used an OFX called the color space transform. And we can see the settings of this plugin from this FX tab. As I have told you that this footage was shot in Sony S Gamut 3 and S Log 3 picture profile. So here I have set the color space to Sony S Gamut 3 and input gamma to Sony S-Log 3 and I've set the output color space to Rec 709 and gamma 2.4. I've set the tone mapping method to luminance mapping and the gamut mapping method to saturation compression. If you don't know how to use this color space transform plugin, then you can check out my detailed video on the color space transform plugin. So if I turn on this node by pressing control D, then you can see all this node is doing is converting the S-Log 3 footage into a Rec 709 version. So if I full screen the image, then you can see this was the before the Sony S-Log 3 version and this is after the conversion. And as I have told you in my last video how to expose S-Log3 footage, in order to get the best looking S-Log3 footage, you have to slightly overexpose the image. So you can see by looking at this waveform that the image is a bit overexposed. So to correct that, I have taken a node before this CST node and renamed it to Offset. In this node, you can see with the help of this Offset tool, I have reduced the exposure to the correct exposure value. And before that, the footage was also looking a bit reddish. You can confirm that from the scopes that the entire footage has a red bias. So I dragged this offset slider in the opposite direction to the red that is towards the blue to reduce the redness of the footage or in other words introduce some blue into the footage so that offsets the red color cast and also fixes the exposure. So this was before the offset correction and this is after the offset correction. Now you can see in S-Log3 you get a lot of noise. So to remove those noise I have taken another node before the offset and this is the first node that I created and I used a denoiser or noise reduction in this node. So if I turn on this node you can see the noise has been removed. If I click on this tab you can see that I have set the mode for the spatial noise reduction to better and set the luma and chroma threshold to 35 and this is reducing the noise in a pretty good way. So this was before there are a lot of noise and after doing the noise reduction you can see the footage is becoming much clearer and also it's making the overall footage a bit smooth as this is a cinematic portrait video so this is also helping in smoothening out the skin of the model as well so that is why i've turned this up to quite a higher value of 35 in other cases if i want more detail out of the image then i wouldn't go this far i'd rather keep the noise reduction level to around 15. so now you can see the footage is looking pretty good but lacking some contrast so after the offset node i've taken another the node called color correction or CC and if I turn on this node you can see here I have done some primary balance saturation hue and luma mix and some custom curves adjustment. So here you can see I have added an S curve to give the image a bit of contrast and from this tab you can see I have boosted the colors and changed the hue angle to 49. So this was before and this is after. If I reset the color boost you can see the skin was looking a bit pale so I boosted it to around 10 to give it some juice. And before the hue was at 50 and if I turn on the vector scope, you can see the skin tone is leaning towards magenta and red. So that is why I shifted the entire hue towards left. 
to place the skin in a much more pleasing hue. And at around 49, the skin looks good to me. And if I check these hue versus curves, then you can see that I haven't changed anything in these parameters on this node. All these adjustments are done before the color space transform. And now if I bring the parrot back, you can see the image is in a pretty good shape. Now if I turn on this last final node, you can see I have done some color grading on this node. I have reduced the midtone detail to minus 25 to make the skin look even smoother. Then I have added a slight contrast with this custom curve and this contrast is being added after the color space transform effect. So it's working on the Rec. 709 footage and not on the S-Log3 footage. So you want to do your color correction part before the color space transform and you want to add the color grading after the color space transform. So I added this contrast as more of a look than to color correct the image. Now if I check out these hue versus curves then you can see I have shifted the green tones a bit more towards yellow. See the more I push it the color of the green would change to more warm tones and if I pull it down the color would change to more cooler tones. So I kept it around here and I changed the color of the dress to a much more warm red color before it was here, it had more of a pinkish tone, but I wanted a much more blood red color. So that's why I changed the color of the dress to a much more warm red color. Now, if I go to the hue versus saturation curve, then you can see I have reduced the saturation of the dress before it was here. If I take out the vector scope, you can see the red is sticking out a bit too much. So that is why I reduced it a bit and increased the saturation of the skin tones. Now, if I go to the hue versus luma, then you can see I have reduced the luminance of the dress as well. So before this was here and after, the red of the dress got denser. Then I didn't do anything else. And finally, I have sharpened the image a bit. So this is my entire grading. So this is the before, the raw footage, and this is after the grading. So this is a really simple and straightforward grade. If you keep your grades simple like this, then in most cases, you will get amazing looking results with your Sony ZV-E10 S-Log3 footage. Now, if I check the second clip here also the same grid is applied i've used the color space transform to convert the footage from s log 3 to rec 709 then with this offset node i have fixed the rate cast and also the exposure then with this noise reduction i have reduced the noise then with this cc node with this custom curve i have added the proper contrast i've also changed the hue and boosted the colors then with this final node i have done the same adjustments i've added the contrast reduced the midtone detail and the same hue versus settings are here and in this clip i think thought the greens were a bit more in your face. You can see it from this vector scope as well. So in this node, I have reduced the green a bit and pushed a bit of red in the shadow areas. So if I turn on this node, you can see the shadows have been lifted a bit more. So that was it. In my last video, I've discussed how I shot this video, what are all the gears that I've used and how you can also get amazing looking footage with your Sony camera. So if you haven't watched that video yet, then you can click on this card to watch it now.